Welcome to this week's episode of Right Here in Mass. Today's guest is Nicole Blaze, the newly appointed Chief Executive Officer of Holyoke Chicopee Springfield Head Start, located in Western Massachusetts. Nicole has over 27 years of experience in the nonprofit sector, managing early education and care programs, has served on various community committees, helped to establish strategic community collaborations, and is an advisory member of the Mass Head Start State Collaboration and serves as treasurer of the Mass Head Start Association Board of Directors. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So happy to be here. Thank you for coming on. I'd love if you could share more with our listeners about you and what you do. Sure. So I am in the early education and care business. Uh, so I have made it my career to ensure that children birth to five have a wonderful early learning experience before kindergarten. And so we work really hard at making sure uh, children have a safe and nurturing, exciting, fun time uh, and and get uh, the joy of learning um, so that they can take that with them when they go off to kindergarten. Um, so I live in Springfield. I'm able to work in Springfield, uh, which really um, makes me happy to kind of give back to uh, the community that I grew up in. I love that. And for our listeners who may not be familiar with Head Start, could you share sure. more about the organization and the programs that you offer? Of course. So uh, Head Start, we are a federally funded program. And uh, Head Start was uh, created back in 1965. I sound like my grandmother back in 1965. <laughs> um, under the Johnson administration, uh, they created this program because uh, across the country, they recognized that uh, students were dropping out of high school um, at, at higher rates. And so folks uh, got together um, to think about well, what can we do to stop that from happening and to improve our overall um, graduation rates. And mm -hmm. uh, they brought in a ton of different people with a lot of different expertise to really look at the program um, you know, from all angles. And so they began to talk about, well, how can we start early? How can we make sure uh, that children have the very best of beginnings um, so that, you know, it gives that we're, because it's hard to do some prevention at the end of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so how can we kind of do some prevention work so perhaps we can curve or decrease you know, or increase, I should say, the graduation rates over here when children get older. Um, so that's kind of when uh, the Head Start story began, and then also really focusing on um, vulnerable children and families, you know, children that may not have, their families may not have been able to uh, afford a preschool experience um, or have other experiences that perhaps other children might have been afforded. Uh, trips to the mu museum or, or summer camps or, um, you know, things that children perhaps who are living in poverty don't have that same access or that same avenue. Mm -hmm. um, so then the conversation just kept, you know, going deeper and deeper. And um, let's talk about uh, working with vulnerable children, because that's who we see as leaving schools, our children who are living in poverty. Um, and so that's when Head Start was born. It was a way to kind of um, combat poverty, the effects of poverty, try to help families, um, uh, you know, lift themselves up and be self-sufficient. Uh, and so uh, the program started as an eight week summer program, just focused on health and nutrition uh, because healthy children are um, well-fed children are ready to learn. And then it just kind of was so popular in that first summer, that pilot summer of 500,000 kiddos uh, that they said, oh, we might be on to something here. And then, the, you know, over the last 50 something years, the program just grew and grew. And you can find Head Start programs in every state and U.S. territory, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. We often say we want to do an exchange program in the winter months with our friends in the Virgin Islands. They can come <laughs> here, we can go there. Uh, but it, and then it, it really focused on three and four year olds. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously all of the research and data showed 
um, that giving a child an early Head Start experience is does such wonders for them when they go off to school ready to learn that they uh, moved or added, I should say, the birth to three to really focus on wow. that brain science and that children are learning from birth and how can we make those investments early. So we are a free resource uh, to families uh, and we provide um, all sorts of different programming, home-based or home visiting programs, sent traditional center-based preschool classrooms and also center-based uh, infant toddler classrooms as well. And we're also the migrant seasonal grantee for the state of Massachusetts. So we're working with families who are here working in our local agriculture. And so they're in the farms and we can safely take care of their kids. Oh, I love that. It sounds like from what you've shared that Head Start helps to provide equity in education and access to all. Absolutely, exactly. So, and I think the name that just stuck <laughs> is uh, the goal was to give children a Head Start mm. so that they had a Head Start in school and in life. And um, it was also a program, which I think is unique, which we don't talk much about or it's just automatic for us, but the public might not realize is that we are just as much a program for uh, children as we are for their families. So we have a really engaging, robust uh, family engagement department. So we're doing parenting workshops, uh, workforce readiness workshops. A third of our staff are, are past or present parents. Uh, so parents who started volunteering in the program and it led to careers in early ed. Um, so it's really just a way to support the whole family and then make sure that family is connected to their community. Because we also know what this data tells us about families who are socially isolated or not connected to their community. So we work really hard at making sure families are connected. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned that the program first started with health and nutrition, which I think is very interesting and also very important, like you mentioned. And so from there, how did the Head Start organization kind of get the inspiration to start branching out into the other programs that it now offers? Sure. Um, I think because uh, the premise, again, was that healthy children are ready to learn and focusing on health and nutrition. Um, realizing that the summer months, because it was just a summer program, the, you know, work was just getting started and then the summer was over and then the kiddos are off to kindergarten. And so one thing was like, we need more time. We need more time uh, and we should be doing more around school readiness. Uh, we should kind of formalize that early education piece. And then, you know what? We really can't do much with this age group without including their families, their parents. Their parents need to know what we're doing uh, because their parents are their child's first teacher. So how can we make sure that we're supporting parents in their role as uh, their child's first teacher? So we're doing ABCs, maybe you could do this at home to help you. Okay, so we have this home mm -hmm. school and then it just kind of evolved from there. So we kept the health and nutrition, added the early education, added that parent involvement piece. And then of course, over the years, uh, added a mental health component as well, mm -hmm. um, as well as then the, you know, the transportation. And also we have, um, our organization has a small uh, department for children uh, with a diagnosed disability. So we have a team of folks who ensure too from that, um, as we're inclusive, uh, making right. sure that all children whether they're in a wheelchair, have a learning disability, or what have you, a health impairment, um, we are able to accommodate their needs. I love that. And you had also mentioned that Head Start does um, home centers, but also or has centers, but it also has at-home programs as well. And so would you say that, uh, like, what's the difference between the two? Would you say that depending on the situation, a child and family might be a better fit for one compared to the other? Sure. Well, you know, we started, um, so our, what we call Head Start is for our preschoolers and early Head Start is for our pregnant moms, uh, infants and toddlers. And so when we were first getting in the business of infant toddler work, we started with home visiting uh, before we then transferred over into a center-based model. So we kept the home visiting because it's a great way 
one for parents who are not ready to put their child in a center-based model, you know, still want to keep their little one close to home. So it's a wonderful way to bring resources uh, into the home, still support uh, mom or dad or grandma, whoever the caretaker is in their role as their child's first teacher. Um, the home visitor brings, basically brings, if she lives out of her car, <laughs> Um, she brings all of the resources and materials uh, to the home. We have 90 minute weekly visits, so it's very consistent. Um, we talk about everything from, you know, child growth and development to um, milestones and uh, to health related issues, anything going on with the family. We also have that, what we call a comprehensive service team. So not only do we have that um, home visitor, but we have that family engagement person. We have a mental health clinician. We have a health team. So visits can um, get wrapped around whatever the needs of the family are at that time. And so it's just, a, uh, and then there's a socialization group. So the home visitor will visit with her 12 families each week, and then twice a month, bring those families together for some socialization so other families can meet other families who are parenting the same age children, again, finds a, a network opportunity and find support that way as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wonderful, especially because although I'm not a parent yet, just from knowing many parents in my life and what they've told me that uh, having that support from the very beginning is crucial. And so it sounds like Head Start does exactly that, is to provide support in a variety of aspects for these young children and their families in order to thrive and grow. Exactly. You know, that's, um, we're, there's no manual, at, you know, as we've, uh, the old um, saying, you know, there's no parent manual, you just, it's on the job training. Um, <laughs> and so we try to take some of what we know in terms of our book smarts around child growth and development, and then match that with the parents expertise in terms of um, their family and their neighborhoods and kind of merge those two together and really form some special partnerships with families, all in an effort to give their child the very best experience um, when they're an infant and toddler. So when they transition over into the big kids school, and then from when they're in the preschool, get them ready also for, for kindergarten and get parents um, in on that very early on so they can see how critical um, their involvement is to the overall success of their child's educational journey too. Absolutely. And I can imagine that likely one of the most rewarding parts about what you do at Head Start is seeing a child from having them from an infant to a toddler to then going on and being super successful throughout their life is probably very re rewarding and something that makes you say, this is why I do what I do. Exactly. And just an interesting little tidbit too. So um, I came into Head Start as an adult. Uh, 20 something years ago as the parent involvement coordinator. And when I applied, um, I was living in the Berkshires at the time. And uh, my mother was famous and still is famous for cutting out articles <laughs> that she finds interesting <laughs> and sends them to myself, my sister, her nieces and nephews, you know, whatever, everyone knows Auntie Ellen's gonna give them an article. Um, for so now it's just become a family, you know, inside little joke, but. So she sends me this article um, to say that the Head Start program uh, just expanded services into Springfield. And mm -hmm. I was living at the Berkshires at the time, and I really wanted to um, come home and try, you know, um, I had gone out to school there and was working at um, a college, at my alma mater, alma mater up there. Um, but I really wanted to get back home. So um she said, you should apply. And I said, you know what, maybe I will. So I sent my little cover letter, cover letter and my little, um, uh, my resume and they invited me for a briefing. And so I let my mother know, guess what? I'm good. Thank you so much. I'm going to go to the briefing. And she says, now don't forget to say hello, uh, to the director, uh, her Janice Santos, because she was your preschool teacher at Head Start. Oh, wow. And I said, I'm not going to remember. I said, of course I will, but I don't think I'm going to remember it. I kind of have memories of that time when I was four or five. Um, 
but yes, of course, mother, I will. Yes, of course. You raised me right. I will. Um, so <laughs> I'm in this briefing with a lot of other people and they're explaining all of the different, what Head Start is and the mission and all the jobs that they now have open because of this expansion. And if you were interested to sign up for an interview. And so after the presentation, uh, the director walks in, who is um, Miss Janice. And I look at her and I say, oh my goodness, in my mind, that's Miss Janice. And everything came flooding back <laughs> from the center, how it looked, the how we would walk in, our lunch table, you know, like everything just came back. And so I waited my turn, this little receiving line. And I said, you know, I just wanted to uh, thank you for the opportunity. And I wanted to reintroduce myself. Uh, my name is Nicole Blaze, uh, but it was Abernathy at the time. And she went, oh, oh my God, how's your sister? Oh my God, how's your mother? Look <laughs> at your face. Oh my God. Oh, I'm, the Head Start works, everybody. Head Start works. Oh my God. She was in my preschool. She was my preschooler. Um, so I had the opportunity to, you know, work for the program that I, my mother uh, enrolled my sister and I in so she could go back to school, finish her education. Um, and then, uh, you know, I worked my way up within the organization in the last decade, worked very closely with Janice. And then I have since um, she retired and I have succeeded her. So she always would say to me, I took care of you when you were little. Now you have to take care of me. And it was just a nice moment kind of passing the torch and little did she know um, a preschooler uh, would walk into her classroom later uh, leading the organization uh, 20 something years later. That's amazing. What a full circle moment. And again, it's just one of those things that makes you say, this is what I was meant to do. And now let's have many more moments in the future like this, where other Head Start children and students come back and work for the organization. Exactly. Right. Yes. So fun. And so with the Holyoke, Chicopee and Springfield location of Head Start, would you say that there's anything different from the other locations throughout Massachusetts specifically, or is there anything that's mostly pretty aligned with all of them? Sure. So um, all of the Head Start programs, we all follow um, the federal um, performance standards. So in terms of uh, the benchmarks and the requirements, all Head Start programs have that same, uh, that we work from that same rule book. Um, and then I think the beauty of Head Start is depending on the needs of your community is how you can design your program. So for example, um, some of our friends up uh, in the Berkshires or even Northampton, uh, some of the towns might be a little more rural and a home visiting model might work very well up there because there's families are so spread out, but the home visiting model meets their needs. Whereas our friends in Boston have a, you know, much more center-based uh, program because they're, you know, they're meeting the needs of the families who are living uh, in Boston. Um, so, uh, you know, I think Head Start is um, the flexibility to design a program uh, based on the needs of your community is great. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the center-based versus the home visiting, the birth to three versus the, the preschool, uh, we really try to mirror the needs of the communities the best way we can. I think at the moment, the one of our bigger challenges is that we're finding, you know, as we kind of work through the pandemic, learned from working uh, in that the pandemic, um, you know, we lost some staff, a lot of women left the workforce. Um, during that time, of course, a lot of the work that is done in early education and care is done mostly by women. We have a few men. We have one male teacher amongst our uh, all of our classrooms. Um, so I think right at the moment, we feel like we're just kind of, our theme this year was uh, recovering, reimagining and rebuilding um, mm. to try to, you know, um, so there's a little bit of that still, just so that we can kind of get back to where we were before the pandemic hit. Um, but I, uh, you know, I think um, from being able to offer part year, so a traditional September to June, six hour day to a more uh, full day, full year concept for parents who are working or going to school, uh, you know, we have kind of that flexibility to be able 
uh, to offer those services, which is Mm. great. Yes. And especially what you mentioned about having the full day for parents who are working or going to school, because that's one challenge I've seen down here in this part of the state where I am in the South Coast is that parents are struggling with having childcare or support for their children in programs they can enroll their children in that work with their work or school hours. So I think that's great that you're also providing that opportunity to parents and families, like you mentioned earlier on in this episode. Yeah, I think, right. And I think too, the pandemic um, brought to light the need for for childcare for families to be able to get back to work. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, um, so it's just kind of figuring out uh, how communities a state, federal, local uh, can then support uh, that to make sure that those services are offered to their to families so that families can get back to work um, or continue their schooling, you know, or whatever it is that they want to do to further themselves. Um, but mm-hmm. we are grappling with a bit of a uh, teacher shortage at the moment. Yeah, right. And I love that you mentioned too, that a big focus of the programs is mental health, because I think especially over the past few years, the importance of that has been brought to light. And so I think that incorporating that into everything that you're doing at Head Start is truly remarkable and needed, absolutely, for the community. It is. I think um, we've also done a lot uh, for staff wellness too you know, Mm -hmm. to really make sure how are we taking care of our caregivers so that they can give the very best of themselves to the children and families enrolled in our program and not take that for granted. You know, that Mm -hmm. it it is hard work um, and making sure that the needs of our staff are met. Uh, So kind of having the staff wellness approach here and then also all of the services that we do around mental health for children and families always kind of staying the same. And that just means, again, that those parenting workshops, um, we do healthy relationships workshops, uh, even just aromatherapy, uh, you know, just even talking about stress, acknowledging stress. Um, We're doing yoga in the classrooms with the kiddos, helping some breathing exercises, self-regulation, like all of these things now. Again, for habit, you know, trying to kind Mm -hmm. of also create some healthy habits too uh, for children and families while they're with us. Uh, And we can't underestimate the need, um, you know, just for even the space to even talk about uh, mental health, mental wellness, even if a teacher is having a tough time, just saying, I just need to take a break. I'm just going to go for a walk really, you know, we had masks for a very long time too that we were wearing. So just being very conscious of, um, the human side of everything and just making sure we're we're doing the right thing by taking care of everyone the best we can. I love that. Are there any current uh, new projects that you're working on or programs that are in the works for Head Start that you're able to talk about? Sure. Well, I mean, I think um, one of the things we have been really focused on, as I mentioned uh, or alluded to a little bit earlier, is rebuilding our workforce. Mm. So we are really trying, you know, we're working very closely with our local community colleges. Um, We have our director of education. We're very uh, lucky that she teaches um, at one of the local community colleges in the early childhood department, um, which is, you know, just a great collaboration. So we're doing a a workforce readiness program with parents Mm -hmm. who want to pursue a career in early childhood. Uh, So we're doing... um, getting parents ready, especially if some of our parents haven't been in school in a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, So instead of just throwing everybody in, just kind of, again, talking about um, what does it mean to be work ready? What are some, how is this going to impact or change the dynamic in your family? What support systems do you need to have in place? You know, all of that kind of pre-work done before the actual coursework happens, but we're hoping we have about eight parents who are participating in that program and they'll be taking coursework and they'll, when they're done, they'll be lead teacher certified for, for preschool, which is great. And we're also doing um, tomorrow's teacher program uh, with some high school uh, students um, who are wanting to pursue a career in early childhood education too. So we have a lot of workforce uh, initiatives happening right now. That's exciting. And especially because 
it reminds me of a conversation I had with another guest, uh, Rick Sullivan from the Western oh, Mass EDC. Yes. And he was talking about everything that's happening in Western Mass for workforce development. And so it sounds like you're very aligned with what's happening in that organization. And I think it's great, especially for that part of the state, to be able to provide these opportunities to individuals and give them the chance to pursue a career that they might feel passionate about and also make it possible for them to do so by removing those barriers to entry. Exactly right. We're trying to clear and make the path clear the path and just make the pathway very accessible. Mm, absolutely. And so, shifting gears to focus on you a little bit, sure. what made you want to focus on early education and care programs in your career? Well, you know, I think I was doing. Um, I was working in higher ed at the time, and I knew that I wanted to stay in the nonprofit sector. Uh, my undergrad. Uh, was a degree in sociology with a concentration in social work. So I knew that, you know, helping uh, people's community work was just where I was, I always gravitated to. Um, and when I wanted to get back to Springfield in the community that I grew up in, um, I was again looking for the opportunity to do to do that. And I think when my mother cut out that article and sent it to me, uh, and I listened to the mission of Head Start and that it not only was it a, a program for children birth to five, but it was equally a program for their parents. And that's the part I, outside looking in, I didn't realize there was this really robust parent involvement uh, department and all of the work there, and then the community connections with other um, community-based organizations. Hey, can someone come and do a parent workshop on resume writing? Or hey, can we kind of create this pathway? You're looking for people, we have people who are trying to connect. Can we make some of these wonderful community collaborations happen? So I think that is what, um, you know, really uh, drew my attention and, and then, you know, when I walked in the door, it was just the tip of the iceberg um, to all of the things that Head Start has to offer in all of those different disciplines. Um, so it was really just a way that met my uh, career goals in terms of, um, you know, not just having a job, um, but really, you know, making a difference um, and really, you know, supporting families. And uh, because with you know, strong families and uh, make strong communities. And mm -hmm. so it's just a, a, my little contribution, um, you know, to help, uh, um, you know, empower families, uh, encourage families, um, you know, support, uh, you know, support families so that they can support their children and that they can, um, you know, really enjoy their community and give back as well. So I think it's just Head Start just offers, there's endless possibilities and no year is the same. Uh, we have different strategic partnerships all the time happening. Um, MGM, the casino here in Springfield, we had a collaboration, they built uh, a Head Start Center. Um, so oh, it's wow. just, um, We've done some work with uh, EDC. You mentioned that with uh, Ann Candillas and the workforce uh, things. We're doing an Educare Springfield collaboration uh, here in the city with an Educare school. So there's just always something happening. And, you know, I should mention too, our migrant seasonal program, which is a completely different, uh, same model, same concept, but just a completely different um, dynamic and group of, of families. Um, so that program is really special. So it's just, it offers um, a lot and it helps, you know, keep me on my toes and just makes me grateful for, um, you know, for the work that our staff do day in and day out. They care for other people's children in a way like that they would care for them like they were their own. So it's just, you know, it's just a great, um, it's just a great, work to do. And, you know, you see kids now who were in Head Start. Um, I just saw a mom at the bagel shop. She rolled down her window and said, Nicole, it's me. And I said, oh my goodness, how are you? And she's like, my baby's graduating. And I'm like, oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's just, you know, all these, um, 
you know, we had a little tagline for a while, a little head start goes a long way. And so we oh, had yeah. the picture of your head, you know, when you were in preschool and then whatever it was that you were doing now. So it's just, you know, um, some of it's anecdotal, a lot, we have a lot more research behind us to back up the importance of an early learning experience before kindergartens. Um, but it's just a great way to connect with the community. I love that. And especially with the fact that the work that Head Start does really makes a difference in the lasting impact for years to come. So the children and infants that you're working with now will go out into the community and influence others around them and do it with their children too. So it's just really wonderful to see how that string keeps on going. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So it's great. And with working in the nonprofit sector and specifically with early um, education and care, it's something that can be difficult, but of course, very gratifying and very rewarding. And so for listeners who might be thinking about going into this field, do you have any advice for them as a professional? You know, I think if you want to devote your career um, to caring for and educating uh children birth to five, you know, it, it is hard work, but there is so much magic that happens in those birth to five, those first five years. And children are just so receptive and ready and curious. I mean, they're built to, uh, to learn. And, uh, you know, we have the opportunity, uh, you know, here at Head Start and the teachers have the opportunity um, to help just elevate that by, even how we are designing the classroom environment to the curriculums we're using, the lesson plans we have. Um, I think it's just, uh, it's not babysitting. It's it's well beyond that. There are outcomes and um, there's observations that are tied, you know, for a reason. Uh, and it's just a lot of, of great work to do uh, to get children ready for um, their you know, school and beyond. And so it is, it, we call it, you know, it's, it's hard work, but it's also heart work. You know, it's, yeah. it's work that you really, um, it's beyond just liking kids because again, there's a science to all of it. There's an art to all of it. Um, and, you know, I think Head Start or any early learning program that offers that educator to really, um, you know, to really make a difference in the lives of, of kids and, and children do, as I can attest to, <laughs> they, you do remember those early, those early years um, and they do make a, la a lasting impression um, on you and they help set the stage for future success. Absolutely. And having been born and raised in Western Massachusetts, what would you say are your favorite local businesses to support? Ooh, well, I love uh, shopping local, um, at, you know, from we could this could be a whole nother uh, session. <laughs> um, but one uh, from the local eateries, uh, you know, Theodore's, uh, which is a barbecue joint here in town that's been here forever is a is a go to uh, for the Blaze family um, right now to uh I have a little inside scoop. My son uh, is a photographer for Go Local Magazine, which is Western Mass and in, into Connecticut. So I get a little inside scoop. But one uh, uh, store that I'm really, um, I'm wearing an, oh, I took it off, but I was wearing a necklace earlier this morning. Um, it had the 413 on it from the living mm. room. So it's a new store that opened in East Longmeadow. And it is, um, it's when antique store meets hip jewelry store meets, um, you know, funky uh, clothing store. It's just this beautiful mashup of, of great little finds, new finds, old finds. And so that's where I find myself on a Saturday afternoon uh, driving over to, to see what they have, they have uh, new in store. Um, so yeah, so the living room is new, uh, hot oven cookies, uh, is a great, is a great, uh, she's doing an, a, an amazing uh, job. These are all things that don't help my diet, but, <laughs> but they're delicious. <laughs> they are delicious. So it makes you, you know, when you think about that, it just makes you also feel really good about, um, 
you know, not having to go to a, a chain restaurant or a chain, right. you know, to really be able to support some really creative, uh, brave, uh, fabulous uh, people who really just help um, make 413 a little more special. I love that. Nicole, this has been such an awesome episode of being able to learn more about you and all that Head Start is doing. And I'd love if you could share with our listeners where they can find you and Head Start online in case you'd like to connect further. Oh, sure. So you can find us online at hcsheadstart.org. And HCS stands for Holyoke Chickabee Springfield. And uh, you can also give us a call at 413-788-6522. And wherever anyone's listening, if they have a child, birth to five or a pregnant mom um, who may be eligible for Head Start services, uh, please reach out because we can help connect you to the Head Start in your community. But it is, uh, there, are, there are no costs to families. Um, so this is a great resource, resource for families who may be struggling to pay out of pocket for a preschool or for childcare. Um, Head Start might be able to, to help families out. Wonderful. And I will link to those in the show notes so that way our listeners can click through and get additional resources from there. But thank you so much again for coming on the show, Nicole. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for having me.